The Renegade is Jeep's interpretation of what a small SUV really should be. It's certainly very different from its segment rivals, and now more competitive with them too, thanks to this mid-term upgrade. As before, quirky looks and characterful detailing hide conventional Fiat underpinnings, but four-wheel drive is an option further up the range, where there's off-road prowess surpassing anything else in the segment. It won't appeal to everyone, but if you like it, you'll probably love it. Take a respected brand, a fresh and vibrant market segment, and a willingness to do something different. Then create from that a product with uncompromising looks, real capability, and clever design. And the result you'd get certainly wouldn't be ordinary. It wouldn't please traditionalists. No, in automotive terms, what you'd get would be something like this, the Jeep Renegade. It first arrived in 2015, but here we're looking at the much improved version of that car, launched at the end of 2018. This model has proved to be a very different kind of Jeep, as it had to be. The Renegade was first launched as the new face of a company that's been busy reinventing itself in recent times, something all great brands occasionally have to do. Land Rover and Jaguar long ago realised that they couldn't sustain themselves on traditional customers. And since the turn of the century, Jeep has been working that out too. The company's under Fiat ownership these days. And for years now, its product range has relied heavily on Latin design and borrowed Italian parts. The Renegade, though, was the first Jeep model to be entirely designed as part of this collaboration. And it was also the first ever to be built outside of the United States. A landmark product then, but a proper Jeep? Well, that's another question entirely. And pragmatists within the Fiat empire have always argued that it doesn't need to be. There aren't many customers wanting such a thing these days, and those that are around certainly won't be buying in the growing market sector. This car primarily targets that for small, fashion-led B-segment Duke genre models. If Jeep is to have a credible future, it can't afford to ignore this sector. At the same time though, in creating the Renegade, it couldn't abandon its rugged brand values and deliver the kind of stylized piece of street furniture we've seen many of the mainstream manufacturers provide when it comes to this kind of car. A difficult ask, given that this model is almost entirely based on just such a thing, Fiat's 500X. As a result, we weren't quite sure what to expect when we first tested this car in 2015, but we were pleasantly surprised to find a model with very much its own personality, reflecting the fact that the Renegade's underpinnings are more appropriate to those of tougher, more rugged product, and one that's a slightly larger, more adventurous thing than its Fiat 500X cousin. So it might also appeal if you're an SUV buyer looking at a Nissan Qashqai or a Seat Ateca C-segment sized model from the next class up. That certainly helped early buyers justify the somewhat aspirational pricing. And as a result, the Jeep brand was kept in some kind of profitability at a time when sales across the rest of its model range were falling. The Renegade might have done even better too, were it not for the fact that from launch it was saddled with a rather outdated petrol engine lineup, an increasingly urgent problem given the European market switch away from diesel. Hence the need for the completely new 1 litre and 1.3 litre petrol Firefly series power plants fitted to this revised model, there to sell alongside cleaner versions of the established multi-jet diesel units. As you might expect, this mid-term wash and brush up has also brought a smartening of the looks, a few extra cabin tweaks and welcome upgrades to both safety and media connectivity. In short, what we're promised here is cutting edge technology and credible heritage packaged into a fashion-centered trendy crossover, which offers a little of the visual uniqueness you'd find in some legendary larger SUVs. As before, there's greater practicality than you might expect from a model in this sector, and buyers continue to get the option of class-leadingly impressive off-road prowess if they're prepared to pay for it. Lots to talk about then. Does it all add up? Well, we're going to find out.
The Renegade thumbs its nose at convention in the small SUV class in lots of ways. Its styling, the continuing availability of diesel engines, a rare 4x4 option and so on. But it couldn't afford to ignore the segment demand for a small, downsized, entry-level, three-cylinder petrol engine. Every other significant rival offers such a thing and builds sales upon it. Until this Renegade model's midterm upgrade in 2018, though, buyers unwilling to fuel from the black pump were fobbed off with two of the least efficient engines in the Fiat Chrysler Empire's portfolio, a thrashy 1.6-litre normally aspirated e-torque unit and an Oldtech four-cylinder multi-air 1.4. Jeeps keen to tell us how much things have changed though, which is why we're testing this car today in the form the company thinks will now be most popular. It might seem odd to think of any Jeep, once a brand characterised by throbbing V8s, being powered by a tiny 999cc three-cylinder engine but that's what we've got here in this entry-level one-litre turbo petrol model. Whether you like the resulting confection will depend a bit on your expectations with regard to right foot response. There's 120 horsepower on tap and if you're quick with the six-speed manual gear stick, rest to 62 miles an hour takes 11.2 seconds on the way to 115 miles an hour. But the key stat is the modest 190 newton metres of torque. That's not much to propel over 1.3 tonnes of Renegade up the road, though if you're only going to be using this Jeep for school runs and commuting, you might think it to be quite sufficient. If not, then your Jeep salesperson has plenty of further options for you. The other new downsized petrol engine in the Firefly series is a four-cylinder 1.3-litre unit, which in our market comes only with 150 horsepower and a six-speed DDCT dual-clutch automatic gearbox. Here, 62 miles an hour from rest takes 9.4 seconds on the way to a max of 122, and there's a gutsier 270 newton meter torque figure that delivers much better mid-range pulling power. You'd only really choose this option, though, if you had an aversion to fueling from the black pump. If not, then it's difficult to escape the feeling that for much the same money, Jeep's 1.6-litre multi-jet 2 diesel unit would be a better a bet. Here you get to make the transmission choice, manual or auto, and there's 120 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque, facilitating 62 miles an hour in 10.2 seconds en route to 110 miles an hour. What none of the engines mentions so far can offer, though, is a 4x4 option. For that, as ever, with a Renegade, you've to choose the top 2-litre multi-jet diesel engine. A unit that only comes mated to four-wheel drive, offers 140 horsepower in its mainstream form, and can be ordered with either manual transmission or a ZF 9-speed auto gearbox. As we referenced earlier, all-wheel drive traction tends to be something that cars of this kind usually steer clear of for all their aesthetic ruggedness. Indeed, two of this Jeep's two most comparable premium-priced compact crossover segment rivals, Honda's HRV and Mazda's CX-3, don't offer it at all. Here, though, you not only get a 4x4 setup, but are actually provided with a rather good one, a Jeep Active Drive system using the same so-called rear axle disconnect system you'll also find on a Range Rover Evoque. Here, it benefits from an increase in Renegade ride height, up from the modest 175mm of two-wheel drive models to 198mm if you get this Jeep with four-wheel drive. And, crucially, it's been paired to the brand's excellent Select Terrain system. Select Terrain is a setup designed to replicate the feeling of having an off-road expert sitting next to you as you drive. With a twist of the rotary Select Terrain dial that four-wheel drive Renegades offer in front of the gear stick, you can choose between a series of customised settings to suit the ground you're travelling over. There are snow, sand or mud modes if you've at least some idea of what you're doing, but if you haven't, then simply select the Auto setting and leave the car to sort itself out. There's also a lock mode that will keep all the wheels turning at the same speed if you end up with your Renegade somewhere you really shouldn't have ventured to in the first place. In the extremely unlikely event that you're going to be doing that on a regular basis, the variant you should be looking at is the pricey top Trailhawk version. It gets an uprated 170 horsepower version of that 2 litre multi jet diesel engine and has to be had with the 9 speed automatic transmission, which is mated in this case to a low range gearbox that gives you a set of crawler ratios to get you across really gnarly terrain. 
in a Trailhawk Renegade, you can really make full use of those low range ratios thanks to an even higher 210 millimeter ride height, which along with restyled bumpers will allow you to attack really testing terrain. The approach, departure and breakover angles you'd get on the normal 4x4 version of this Jeep, 21 degrees, 32.1 degrees and 23.5 degrees are, on a Trailhawk model, improved dramatically to 30, 34 and 24 degrees. Plus, Trailhawk buyers get hill descent control to ease down slippery slopes and an extra rock mode on the select terrain system, cementing this variant's top trail rated status. It's all very impressive, but ultimately somewhat irrelevant in terms of the affordable, modestly powered two-wheel drive Renegade models that the majority of customers will choose. And there lies the problem. It's very hard to take a car that's so potentially capable off-road and create from it a two-wheel drive, more tarmac-orientated version that's as good as less rugged rivals on a paved surface. A Jeep has certainly tried hard to do that, something aided by underpinnings that this car shares with its FCA Group cousin and small SUV segment rival, the Fiat 500X. And to some extent, those efforts have borne fruit, with grip levels reasonable and body roll decently controlled. For all that though, this isn't a car that particularly likes being hurried along. Despite torque vectoring to aid cornering traction, you certainly won't be throwing yourself through a series of bends in the way you might be tempted to in rivals, say, like Honda's HRV or even Suzuki's SX4 S Cross. The very firm ride, the notchy gearbox, and the rather vague steering all mitigate against that. Plus, that bluff shape and the big door mirrors mean that it's a little noisy at speed. In some ways, though, all these things are part of the Renegade's charm. Don't get us wrong, you can push things along quite quickly in this Jeep if you need to. It certainly isn't clunky in an old-school lumbering SUV kind of way, but there's more than a whiff of that in the measured, ever so slightly ponderous way it responds to your commands. In some ways, though, we rather like that. Arguably, it's all part of the authenticity that should be part of the whole Renegade experience, and it makes this car very different, not only from its Fiat 500X design stablemate, but also from just about any other compact SUV segment model you might care to name. At the wheel of this car, there's no fake Duke genre pretense of ruggedness. Instead, you know you're in a Jeep, not only because of the shape and the quirky little design details, but because of the capable, solid, unbreakable feel that's delivered as you drive. And that's exactly how it should be. Whatever you think of the stylized compact crossover segment, it's certainly brought us some interesting pieces of design. At one extreme, you've this bluff, tough-looking Jeep Renegade, aesthetically equipped for a trip into the Serengeti. At the other, there's a car like Fiat's 500X, with attitude far better suited to the speed humps in Sloan Square. Given this, you wouldn't expect these two models to have much in common, but in fact, under the skin, they share almost everything and roll along the same production lines in the Fiat Chrysler conglomerate's Italian Melfi factory. A better example of product differentiation from a common platform would be difficult to find. Thanks to this approach, there's fundamentally little that's actually very American about this car, but that fact's been artfully disguised with packaging that draws deeply from the iconic roots of this distinctive Yankee brand. The rugged, squarical shape with its short overhangs and beefy bumpers is classic Jeep, as is the signature seven-slot grille flanked by circular headlights that are tucked slightly under the leading edge of the aluminium bonnet for a more contemporary look. Those two last features have been tweaked as part of this mid-term upgrade. The grille now has a smarter cut-in silhouette similar to that of the latest Wrangler, while on plusher versions, the round headlights look particularly Mercedes Galanderwagen-esque when fitted out with these full LED beams. This lower bumper area has also been completely revised and these corner cutout sections added. 
Not much has changed in profile, apart from the fact that the classic trapezoidal wheel arches can now take rims of up to 19 inches in size. We've got 18 inches here. As before, there's a rugged lower side sill cladding and a raised belt line that's supposed to reference the tough Jeep Wrangler model's half doors. From this perspective, you also appreciate the Renegade to be a slightly larger thing than most contemporary models in the compact crossover class. It's actually over a metre longer than a Nissan Juke for instance, and aims to be a more viable choice for smaller families than most of its cheaper rivals. Other brands have also tried this trick and brought us similar cars of this kind, like Honda's HRV and Suzuki's SX4 S-Cross. Ultimately, though, as with this Fiat Punto-based Jeep, they're limited by the restrictions of a super mini-based platform that can only be stretched so far. In this case, that means 4.2 metres of total length. It's just enough to give this car the chunky military surplus look of a Hummer saved from a hot wash. That's something perhaps most evident at the rear. Here at the back, the square Wrangler style tail lamps, now updated with the option of full LED illumination, feature the distinctive Renegade X icon you'll also find elsewhere on the car. It's an important graphic for the brand, inspired by the design of the vintage jerry cans that played as much a part in winning World War II as the original 1941 Willys Jeep did itself. And inside, well, take a seat at the wheel and at first glance, the interior seems much as it was. If you happen to be familiar with this Renegade model's cabin, though, you'll quickly pick up on the smarter redesign for the lower part of this centre stack. And you'll notice the larger 8.4-inch Uconnect infotainment screen that now sits above it, a standard feature providing you avoid entry-level trim. Otherwise, not much has changed because not much needed to. Jeep has tried to carry over elements of the characterful exterior look and include a few extra quirky touches, most of which you might miss on first acquaintance. For instance, you'll find that the Jeep face, the round headlights and that seven slot front grille is embossed into the speaker covers and the fairing behind the rear view mirror, as well as onto the interior side of the tailgate. Then there are these outer fascia vents shaped apparently to reflect the design of base jumping equipment. The trim surrounding these, the gear stick and the speaker covers can, as you can see, be color coordinated as an option. What else? Well, this central ventilation pod is modeled on a set of ski goggles and there are front cup holders with base mats that feature the same X design as the tail lamps. Some of this stuff works and some of it, well, a bit like the spider inside the petrol flap waving ciao baby, really doesn't. Ahead of you, the chunkily distinctive three-spoke multifunction steering wheels, very Jeep specific too, and through it, you glimpse a rev counter that for some reason feels the need to feature a mud splat instead of a red line. More noticeable though, at least on the plush variant we're trying here, is what lies between the two main dials. Affordable Renegade models get the usual information screen here, but this top limited version features something much classier a bigger, customizable 7-inch TFT colour display that, amongst other things, can show navigation, speed, real-time economy, audio information and safety warnings. It's an example of the kind of smart, clever design you'll also find elsewhere around the front of this car. Take the way that this beefy passenger grab handle is smoothly integrated into the air vent, for example. The freshly restyled circular ventilation controls are nice too, and everything seems to have been decently screwed together by the Italian factory. There are areas, though, where a little more thought might have paid dividends. The dashboard top you'll rarely touch is fashioned from lovely soft-touch plastic, but the materials around the sensor tunnel that you'll feel every time you release the fiddly electronic parking brake are hard and scratchy. The seats, in practically light-shaded here, could also be better, lacking a little in long journeying support and offering headrests that don't adjust high enough so they dig into your shoulders. The thick pillars are somewhat restrictive in terms of visibility too, though this fault's easy to forgive given that the cabin itself is so glassy and airy. It could do with being a little more practical though. The door bins are tiny, there's nowhere to put your sunglasses and you can't charge your phone anywhere out of sight. 
The most likely place for you to put your handset is in one of these two compartments provided ahead of the gear lever, positioned near USB, aux in and 12 volt input points. There's a deep storage box between the seats and narrow pen slots provided alongside the twin cup holders mentioned earlier. There's a net in the front passenger footwell and the glove box is big enough to swallow a tablet. Appropriately, the fascia's dominant feature, that improved Uconnect Center Dash touchscreen we mentioned earlier, has been developed with a nod to SUV motoring. Get yourself a model where the base 5-inch monitor has been upgraded to this 8.4-inch display, and once you've downloaded an appropriate app, you'll be able to use a Jeep Skills feature that measures drive, pitch, roll, pressure and altitude to give you real-time feedback on your off-road driving abilities. You'll also get information on things like G-forces, steering angle and performance, guidance to recommended routes and online awards called badges to recognise improvements in your driving prowess. Of perhaps more interest to most buyers will be the more ordinary things this improved display can offer. In addition to the usual vehicle information, audio and navigational readouts, there are climate and ventilation options too, though thankfully, as we've said, proper buttons for these also feature beneath the monitor. As on other Fiat Chrysler models, the screen setup is admirably clear and intuitive to use with voice activation and control systems that are easy to figure out. So you won't have to be delving into the manual every time you want to Bluetooth pair your phone or try to find a point of interest on the sat nav. There's voice control, pinch and swipe functionality for the color screen and a text to talk feature if you need it. There's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring too. For best use of this infotainment setup, you'll want to download the compatible Uconnect Live app onto your smartphone that'll allow you to customise your onboard entertainment, accessing internet radio, online and social media. Plus, you'll receive updates on your vehicle status and have all information relating to your journey brought to you in real time. Time to move back to the rear, noticing on the way how accessible this boxy cabin is. The front doors open out to an angle of 70 degrees, while these at the back pull back even wider to 80 degrees. Now for anyone used to cars in this class who's tried to cram an older person into the back of something like a Nissan Duke, it'll be a pleasant change. Take a seat in the back and the first thing you notice is the vast headroom enabled by the boxy shape. And that's particularly good news if you were thinking of paying extra for one of the big glass panoramic roofs that are now common in this segment. Yes, as an option, this Jeep offers one of those too. Normally, this feature compromises crucial inches of headroom for rear seat folk. Not in this case, as well as the usual dual pane electric sliding top. The Renegade offers something even better, a so-called MySky roof arrangement consisting of two separate panels that can be removed and stored in the boot, creating a real open-air driving experience. This was the first Fiat Chrysler automobile conglomerate model to use what the group calls its small, wide 4x4 architecture. And sure enough, in terms of exterior dimensions, this small Jeep is indeed wider than its most comparable premium-priced compact crossover segment rivals. To be specific, 20 millimeters wider than a Suzuki SX4 S-Cross and 33 millimeters wider than a Honda HR-V. We have to say, though, that across this back seat, you don't really notice that. There's certainly decent space for two, but three adults would need to be on personable terms over a longer trip, particularly given that legroom is as restricted as it usually is in this class of SUV. The result in this Renegade is a model that would make an excellent second family car, but might not be the best choice for parents in search of a principal vehicle. Map pockets are provided in both seat backs. There's a central USB port. There are coin trays in the door pulls and bottle holders in the doors. If you've specified the function pack, which gives you a 40-20-40 split for the seat back, then you get this pull strap that can allow you to fold down the center section of the backrest, which reveals twin cup holders when retracted. Let's finish off with a look at luggage space. Now, we'd expected 
the squarical styling and longer than average vehicle length to deliver class leading standards of space. But in fact, the chunky tailgate rises to reveal one of the smaller boots in the compact crossover segment. This one, 351 litres in size. That makes it certainly more restricted than the trunk you'd get in rivals like the two we just mentioned, the SX4 S-Cross and the HRV. More comparable instead to the space you'd find in a Nissan Duke or indeed in this car's curvier cousin, the Fiat 500X. Still, there's about as much room here as you'd get in an ordinary focus-sized family hatchback and you do at least get this adjustable height boot floor that, as an option, can be specified in this reversible form with an easy wipe-clean surface. Under the floor panel, there's a Jeep branded cover for a compartmentalized area in which you can store smaller items if you're unwise enough to forego the chance to add in the optional full-sized spare wheel we'd always recommend you specify on such a potentially capable vehicle. And two bag hooks are included, as are four tie-down points, plus you get netted storage areas on both sides of the cargo bay. If you need more room, then the seats fold forward with the usual 60-40 split, or at least they usually do. As just mentioned, this particular car has been specified with the extra cost function pack with that 40-20-40 split rear seat back. This means that longer items like skis can, if necessary, be pushed through between a couple of rear seated passengers. Once you've folded everything flat, 1,297 litres of carriage capacity is opened up. It might help to understand the thinking behind the pricing span adopted here, which from launch was pitched in the 19 to 31,000 pound bracket. Essentially, this Renegade remains one of those compact SUVs that straddles the B and C segments of the crossover class. Or put another way, if you can't decide between a little Duke or capture size model or a larger Qashqai or Attica sized one, then Jeep hopes a Renegade will suit you perfectly pricing reflects that. Don't expect the kind of 17 to 18,000 pound entry level price you might hope for from a really small SUV, but on the plus side, it's perfectly possible to buy a very nicely specified Renegade with the kind of trim and engine choice you'd really like without worrying that you're going to go way over 25,000 pounds. Let's talk about range structure and focus on the front driven derivatives that almost all customers are looking for. That £19,000 entry level figure applies to a base spec 1 litre petrol sport variant that few Renegade customers want. The rest of the lineup, which at launch was priced from just under £22,000, is primarily based around either longitude trim or, as in this instance, plusher limited spec. In both cases, your starting point is the 120 horsepower, 1 litre, 3 cylinder petrol engine we're trying here. If you don't want that, you can pay £1,500 more for the 120 horsepower 1.6 litre multi jet diesel, or £2,200 more for a perkier package that gives you 150 horsepower 1.3 litre four cylinder petrol engine mated to a DDCT dual clutch six speed auto gearbox. Those are the key things you need to know, but we'll also add in a bit of extra detail for those renegade folk who want to cut across the current zeitgeist and buy a diesel. That 1.6 multi-jet unit just mentioned can be had with a DDCT six-speed auto gearbox for another £1,400, or if you're able to stretch to this limited level of trim and spend the thick end of 30000 on your renegade, your dealer will suggest you progress into the four-wheel drive section of the range, which is based entirely around the company company's larger two-litre multi-jet diesel engine. The usual all-wheel drive Renegade package sees a 140 horsepower version of this unit mated to Jeep's on-demand active drive system and a choice of manual or nine-speed ZF automatic transmission. The ultimate choice, though, is the top Trailhawk variant, which uses an uprated 170 horsepower version of the 2-litre diesel. That 9-speed auto transmission and the brand's active drive low four-wheel drive setup with its gutsy low-range gearbox. You've really got to like Renegades to stump up around £31,000 for one of those, though. 
On to the value proposition that this Jeep's pricing delivers. Now, it's probably not especially relevant to compare the pricing of this car against that of its Fiat 500X development stable mates. Both models are aimed at rather different buyers, but we'll do it anyway though. 500X pricing starts at around £17,000, but if you equip that car with the same one litre petrol engine used in this one, the pricing's actually very similar. And looking beyond Fiat Group products, well, as we pointed out at the beginning, the idea here has been to straddle the B and C SUV segments. So it's not really realistic to wonder why the starting point for Renegade ownership is up to £4,000 more than the cheapest little Nissan Juke or Renault Capture. Most other products in the Super Mini derived SUV B segment would save you around £2,000 on this Jeep, though in many cases that saving would come with significantly less power. Power. Here we're thinking of a vast range of different B segment crossovers Citroen's C3 Aircross, Ford's Echo Sport, Hyundai's Kona, Kia's Stonic, Mazda's CX3, the MG ZS, Peugeot's 2008, Seat's Arona, Sangyong's Tivoli, Suzuki's Vitara, Vauxhall's Crossland X, and Volkswagen's T Cross. For a closer match to what's on offer here though, we'd point you towards compact SUVs that, like this one, aim to occupy the larger end of the B segment. Cars like Suzuki's SX4 S-Cross, Mitsubishi's ASX, and what for us would be the closest segment match to a Renegade, Honda's HRV. Do that and you're much more likely to agree with Jeep's assertion that this car has been extremely competitively priced. We're assuming in all this that you're buying into the mid or lower part of this Jeep's pricing spectrum. Choosing a pricier Renegade variant, one of those four-wheel drive models for instance, takes you perilously near to the kind of pricing territory that would otherwise net you prestigiously badged small SUV models like Audi's Q3 and BMW's X1. There's a lot to think about then in carefully thinking through the marketing proposition on offer here. When all said and done though, we can see a small but pretty significant group of buyers concluding that there really is nothing quite like a Renegade. If you're one of those people, you're going to need to know just how generous the American brand has been with the standard spec. Time for the detail on that. Even entry-level sport models come with 16-inch alloy wheels, daytime running lights, auto headlamps, electric mirrors, all-round power windows, an alarm, a neat shark fin roof antenna, and some key camera-driven safety features we'll cover off in a moment. Inside, you get air conditioning, a six-way adjustable driver's seat, cruise control, Bluetooth phone connectivity, and a multifunction steering wheel, via which you can control a decent quality six-speaker DAB stereo. That's also accessible via the standard 5-inch Uconnect touchscreen, the portal through which you can activate a whole range of infotainment services. Download the Uconnect Live app onto your smartphone and you'll be able to access internet radio, online music and Reuters news at the same time as keeping yourself connected through Facebook and Twitter. If you've decided on a Renegade but want to treat yourself to something a bit nicer than sport level trim, then you'll want to look at finding the £2,500 premium Jeep asks for its mid-range longitude spec. Here you get larger 17-inch wheels, front fog lights, roof rails, rear parking sensors and, as we'll see later when we turn to safety issues, the peace of mind of autonomous braking. Inside a longitude variant, there's smart techno leather for the steering wheel, dual zone automatic air conditioning and a larger 8.4 inch Uconnect center dash infotainment screen, complete with satellite navigation and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring. To get the kind of Renegade you see in the brochures though, you'll need the plush limited spec we've got here. Identifiable by its larger 18 inch alloy wheels, a bright exhaust pipe finisher and the full LED lighting that features in the headlamps, the front fog lamps and the tail lamps. There's also adaptive cruise control and front parking sensors. Inside, limited buyers get a smarter cabin with full leather upholstery and a 7-inch TFT instrument display. Plus, there's heating for the steering wheel and the front seats, lumbar adjustment for the driver's seat, front floor mats, vinyl inserts for the doors and real leather for the steering wheel. 
In the unlikely event that you've decided to go the whole hog and get yourself the off-road orientated Trailhawk version, identifiable by its black bonnet decal and special 17-inch off-road wheels, you'll get limited spec embellished by a few accoutrements appropriate to life in the wilds. Things like front and rear skid plates, underside protection, hill descent control and a rear tow hook. There's red stitched black leather upholstery and privacy tinted glass too. Right, on to options. So when it comes to extra cost features, bear in mind that it's not really possible to buy an entry-level sport model, then add in the extra cost things you want. Most optional features require you to have progressed at least to mid-range longitude trim. We certainly think you'd need a spare wheel on a car of this kind, and whilst box ticking, we'd want to look at powered seats and the eight-speaker Beats audio system with its incorporated subwoofer and maybe also the visibility pack that gives you auto headlamps and wipers, auto high beam and an electrochrome rear view mirror. Limited and Trailhawk variants can be specified with a parking pack that includes a rear parking camera and a park assist system that will automatically steer you into spaces, plus blind spot detection to stop you pulling out in front of another vehicle and rear cross path detection, which alerts you to oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space. You might additionally want to look at paying extra for an electric sliding panoramic glass roof, but our preference would be to instead opt for what is arguably the most desirable extra cost feature you can have on a Renegade, the clever My Sky roof. This gives you two removable glass panels that when stowed allow for a real open air driving experience. The spec small print though will tell you that the My Sky option is only available to customers who've already paid extra for what Jeep calls its function pack. Fortunately, that's well worth having. Incorporating power folding mirrors, a keyless entry and start system, key fob controlled powered windows and a reversible and height adjustable cargo floor. Get that function pack on a limited spec model like this one and you get a 40-20-40 split rear seat back too. On to aesthetics. Now bear in mind that you're probably going to be paying your Jeep dealer extra for your choice of paint colour. The only one that comes as standard is Alpine White. Beyond that, there are some daringly bold shades if you feel able to stretch to them. Solar Yellow, Hyper Green or Omaha Orange, anyone? Well, here we've stayed conservative with Jet Set Blue Metallic. What else? Well, with limited trim, your Renegade can make more of a driveway statement when equipped with even bigger 19-inch wheels. Or with a black line pack, which gives you gloss black finishing for the wheels, the badging and elements of the bodywork and the interior trim. If you're happy to go to the next level of showiness, then you'll be pleased to learn that all Renegade variants can be embellished with a range of decals for the bonnet and the doors. A blacked out bonnet section will fool even Jeep enthusiasts into thinking that you've stumped up for the top Trailhawk version. Or you could add huge military stars to the bonnet or the doors if you like the General Eisenhower look. There are various kits to embellish the look of the front grille, and you can add in covers for the door mirrors, a front air dam, a side sill kit, special side mouldings, a rear scuff plate, and frames around the tail lights. Inside, you can embellish the air vents, the door speaker, and the tunnel console with grey satin bezels, and add in silver pedal covers and door sill guards. As for practical stuff, well, you can, of course, specify a tow bar. It's detachable, and you might well want roof bars too. You'll need them if you're going for the extra cost roof box. The roof bars can also be equipped with attachments for the carriage of cycles, skis, snowboards, surfboards, and a roof cargo basket. Bicycles can also, of course, be attached to an optional rear-mounted carrier. If you haven't gone for the function pack we mentioned earlier, you might well want the reversible cargo mat available with or without a flap that protects the boot sill. There's also an optional cargo net and a cargo area tray and a cargo tote bag specially shaped for the boot area. There are front and rear molded splash guards too. For the cabin, you can add clips onto the back of the front headrests that allow the attachment of coat hangers or holders for tablets to entertain rear passengers. 
On to safety. Now, Jeep needed to upgrade this model's camera-driven safety tech and has done. All models now get traffic sign recognition, which identifies speed signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. You then have the option of using an intelligent speed assist feature that with a tap of a steering wheel button will set your speed to meet the limit you've just passed. For the highway, there's also an upgraded Lane Departure Warning Plus package that not only warns you when you veer over lane delineating lines, but also gently steers you back to where you ought to be. In addition, provided you avoid entry-level trim, Forward Collision Warning Plus autonomous braking is now standard fit. It scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards as you drive. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, then the car will automatically brake itself, decreasing the severity of any resulting accident. In addition to the camera safety tech, all models get the expected things. Isofix child seat fastenings, tyre pressure monitoring, an energy absorbing steering column, hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and twin front side and curtain airbags. To try and make sure those bags won't be needed, there's plenty of electronic assistance, ESC stability control and electronic roll mitigation of course, plus all speed traction control and a brake traction control system to offer extra grip on start off or through the bends. The ABS braking system features panic brake assist and ready alert braking to quicken emergency stops. There's a DST or driving steering torque system to counter scary oversteer on low grip surfaces and trailer sway control will come in useful too if you'll be fitting a tow bar and doing some towing. If you needed a reason not to buy the original version of this Renegade, the petrol engines it offered provided it. The 1.6-litre e-torque and 1.4-litre multi-air 2 units that this model series started out with were well beyond their sell-by dates even back in 2015 and looked thirsty, dirty and breathless in comparison to the new era power plants used by obvious rivals. But forget that now, this Renegade is now at least competitive in terms of running cost efficiency if you want one that fuels from the green pump. Jeep says that the introduction of the Firefly series 1 litre and 1.3 litre petrol engines announced with this revised model have brought about a 20% improvement in cleanliness and frugality, a claim that's difficult to verify since the official testing cycle these days uses a more stringent procedure than it did back in 2015. You'd certainly expect a big improvement. The two new turbo petrol power plants comply with Euro 60 standards, include GPF gasoline particulate filters, and feature all aluminium construction that makes them impressively light. This car's one litre unit, for instance, tips the scales at just 93 kilos. They use the Fiat Group's multi air technology in its third generation form, which improves combustion efficiency by adjusting valve lift and timing. Other Firefly series engineering focus points include reduced internal friction, a lower compression ratio and a very compact combustion chamber to benefit thermal efficiency. The Renegade needs all this engineering ingenuity because it's a touch on the portly size by the standards of the small SUV segment, tipping the scales at 1,320 kilos in this its lightest form. The curb weight norm in the segment is 100 to 150 kilos less than that. You might think this to be fair enough given this Jeep's relatively spacious cabin and its potential for slightly greater off-piste ability, and we wouldn't disagree. But weight is probably the main reason why this one-litre Renegade can't quite hit the usual combined fuel and CO2 benchmark figures that tend to be achieved by small SUVs in their entry-level petrol forms. We'd normally expect around 50 miles per gallon and just under 130 grams per kilometre of CO2. To be fair, the one-litre version of this Jeep gets reasonably close to that, managing 46.3 mpg on the combined cycle and 138 grams per kilometre of CO2. For the alternative 1.3-litre automatic petrol model, you're looking at a very similar showing, 44.1 mpg and 144 grams per kilometre. If you share Jeep's view that there's still a market for black pump fueled motoring in this segment and instead choose the 1.6 litre multi-jet 2 diesel, 
you're looking at 57.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 129 grams per kilometre for a manual model and 56.5 miles per gallon and 130 grams per kilometre for the automatic version. Finally, we'll brief you on the four-wheel drive variants, burdening this little SUV with a big two-litre diesel engine, a four-wheel drive system and potentially the kind of proper nine-speed auto gearbox you'd find on a much bigger crossover isn't a recipe for running cost efficiency and so it proves. A two-litre multi-jet two diesel 4x4 140 horsepower Renegade manages 47.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 155 grams per kilometre of CO2 in manual form or 44.8 mpg and 166 grams per kilometre if you specify it as an automatic. For completion we'll tell you that the top Trailhawk variant which uses the nine-speed auto gearbox and the 170 horsepower version of this engine manages 42.8 mpg and 173 grams per kilometer of co2 overall we'll summarize by agreeing with cheap marketeers that the brand is now there or thereabouts when it comes to running cost returns as we've said plenty of directly competitive models can better this renegade's efficiency showing but all of them are less capable vehicles and most of them are slightly smaller too so How's Jeep done it? Well, the brand points to things like optimised aerodynamics, electric power steering and detailed touches like the lightweight aluminium wheels. Engine efficiency is aided by a very efficient exhaust gas recirculation system and a particularly effective close coupled diesel particulate filter. Plus, of course, there's the usual stop-start system, which cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. The 4x4 versions are aided by features like the rear axle disconnect system, which seamlessly switches into two-wheel drive when 4x4 traction isn't needed. Of course, the ultimate figures you achieve will depend very much on how you drive something you can monitor here in various ways. There's a, a fuel economy meter in the instrument binnacle screen and the infotainment systems Uconnect Live section has an eco drive screen which monitors your driving in real time via four parameters acceleration, deceleration, shifting gears and speed variation. What else might you need to know? Well, these days Jeep offers a much more competitive customer after sales package. A five year, 75,000 mile warranty, five years of roadside assistance and three years of servicing. The petrol models need servicing every year or every 9,000 miles, whichever occurs soonest. For the diesel variants, it's every year or 12,500 miles. As for residual values, well, industry experts Cap HPI reckon that after the standard three year or 60,000 mile period, a volume Renegade one litre longitude variant would still be worth 32 to 33% of its original purchase price, a reasonable showing by class standards. On to insurance groups. Now, in the petrol range, this one litre model is rated at groups 9E, 10E, or 11E for the Sport, Longitude, and Limited models, respectively. Longitude and Limited 1.3 litre petrol auto models are respectively rated at 14E and 15E. Longitude and Limited 1.6 litre multi jet diesel models are rated at 13E and 14E, respectively. The 2 litre multi jet diesel 4x4 derivative rates at groups Group 16E. At the top, Trailhawk 2 litre diesel auto 4x4 is Group 18E. This Renegade has brought a long overdue dose of credibility to the compact SUV segment. Here, you get plenty of style in a bluff, tough Jeep kind of way, but there's decent substance behind that too, with near family-sized practicality and even the potential for some reasonable off-road prowess if you're prepared to pay for it. So, you get a little more than you might expect to from this class of car, which is just as well given premium pricing that lifts this Jeep well clear of cheaper offerings in the Duke genre. 
If you're okay with that and dig the distinctive look, then potentially there's much to like here, especially with this revised design. The new petrol engines remove the Achilles heel that blighted the original version of this model and combine with strong safety standards and the high-tech features you'd want a reasonably expensive family car to provide. As before though, what's most important is that a Renegade delivers a depth of character you probably wouldn't think you'd find at this price point. The result is the kind of car people talk about the sort almost everyone will have an opinion on, so shy and retiring types should shop elsewhere. Traditional Jeep buyers probably will. If you eat squirrel, own a bowling ball and call your first cousin your spouse, then a Renegade won't be your cup of tea. For everyone else though, this is Jeep's most accessible model yet. Certainly, you could argue that ride and handling have been slightly compromised as part of the desire to preserve the company's off-road credibility, but that's the price you pay for the kind of authenticity this brand has been providing since 1941. Ultimately, what's important here is that Jeep has a fresh direction and a relevant product to offer buyers who never previously would have considered one of its cars. These people will like the fact that in a sea of compact crossovers, this one's very different from the norm. A renegade, if you like, just as every Jeep should be.